You know, we are still waiting on an updated image of this object from NASA. We see Representative Anna Paulina Luna sharing this week that it will not be shared un until the government is reopened. Do you make anything of this? Is NASA hiding something here? Sounds like it, right? I mean, what have they got to lose? I mean, it's only a sheet of paper. I mean, it's not like a top secret thing you put in a safe. It's just a sheet of paper. So what do they got to lose by, by announcing that they have this information? Because it, it fosters more and more speculation. And at a certain point, it becomes counterproductive. NASA didn't release the new 3i Atlas images when they were taken. They simply stopped talking. Michio Kaku has warned that such a sudden halt in communication is not normal procedure, especially when the only publicly available images now come from Spain, showing an object that is not behaving like a comet should. No familiar tail. An unexpected nickel signature. Details that don't line up with the label it has been given. And when information that could clarify the situation is held back, people start asking why. The silence becomes the message. And as 3i Atlas moves closer, quiet discussions have begun about what it would mean if this object weren't natural. Because if it is something made, not formed, then its arrival is not just a sighting, it's contact. The first point of confusion is the imagery itself. The most recent publicly available images, those from observatories in Spain, show 3i Atlas lacking the clear, bright tail that a comet should display as it nears the sun. Under normal conditions, solar radiation heats the volatile material in a comet's body, releasing gas and dust that form a visible tail stretching for thousands of miles. But in these images, that defining feature is absent. This is what first Spark claims that the object might not be a comet at all. However, Michio Kaku offered a more grounded interpretation. He suggested that 3i Atlas may be extremely old, possibly having traveled through different star systems, environments, and cosmic debris fields for billions of years. Over that time, it could have acquired layers of material that obscure or alter its expected behavior. The high nickel content detected in the object, he explained, could reflect this long interstellar history rather than something engineered or artificial. In his view, the composition is unusual, but not impossible. I have my own point of view on this, and that is that this is a very old object, perhaps 7 billion years old. And in 7 billion years, there's been a plenty of time to accumulate garbage. That's why, for example, the nickel content of the comet is off scale. Its chemical composition is not what an ordinary comet should be. And that, I think, is because over 7 billion years, it's had plenty of time to ac accumulate different gases, different elements, different kinds of environments that it goes into. And I think that explains a lot of the mystery behind, behind the comet. What complicates the situation is what we haven't seen. The best, clearest images of 3i Atlas were taken on October 2nd by the high-rise camera aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. These are the images that would show surface texture, structural shape, and behavior with far greater clarity than the Spanish telescope captures. But those images have not been released. NASA has neither presented them nor given a firm date when they will be made public. Kaku pointed out that withholding this kind of data does not reassure the public, it invites speculation. When information is delayed without explanation, people naturally question the reason for that delay. He emphasized that in the scientific communication, transparency prevents panic. Silence breeds it. And right now, silence is exactly what is growing. As for the possibility that 3i Atlas could be artificial or extraterrestrial, Kaku addressed it directly. He stated that the probability of an artificial origin is not zero, but very small and should not be treated as the primary conclusion. Some observers have noticed what they interpret as slight acceleration or motion that appears non-gravitational, leading to claims that the object may be revving a propulsion system. But Kaku explained that such effects could easily come from natural causes, such as pieces of the object breaking off or gas escaping unevenly as it travels near the sun. These processes can nudge a comet's path without any intelligent guidance involved. However, he also acknowledged that if the object were to show clear controlled maneuvering or attempt communication, that would fundamentally change the situation. For now, there is no evidence of that. 3i Atlas is projected to pass Earth at a safe distance of around 167 million miles, posing no physical threat. The real tension lies not in collision, but in interpretation. 
timing and what remains unseen. To move forward with clarity, astronomers turned their attention toward the structure surrounding the object itself. The shape, direction, and distribution of the dust and gas around a comet can often reveal more about its internal composition than its surface ever could. This is where Dr. Avi Loeb's detailed analysis becomes important because instead of looking only at the nucleus, he examined the entire environment 3i Atlas was generating as it moved. What emerged was not the familiar cometary geometry of a single tail trailing behind the body. Instead, Loeb identified a highly structured system of jets, and most notably, a pronounced anti-tail, material streaming toward the sun instead of away from it. Anti-tails are not impossible, but they require a very specific alignment of light, dust distribution, and viewing perspective. They usually appear faint, thin, and temporary. But in the case of 3i Atlas, the anti-tail is defined, persistent, and large. That alone suggests that something about this object is operating outside common comet behavior. The presence of such a strong anti-tail implies uneven outgassing, meaning that the surface is not releasing material uniformly. Rather, certain parts of the body appear to activate while others remain dormant. That kind of localized activity often indicates that the nucleus is either fractured or composed of multiple distinct layers formed under different conditions. It is possible that 3i Atlas accumulated material across multiple star systems through eras of cosmic radiation, gravitational stretching, collisions, and long spans of exposure to interstellar dust. Each layer would carry its own threshold for heating and release. So instead of one unified surface shedding particles in a predictable arc, the object behaves more like an archive of environments stacked together, each responding differently to the sun's proximity. As the object moved past perihelion, the closest point in its orbit to the sun, this pattern didn't stabilize, it intensified. Most comets grow more visually coherent as they warm. Their gas production increases and their tails expand into long, bright, graceful structures extending millions of miles. But 3i Atlas did the opposite. Instead of smoothing into a recognizable form, it displayed a branching, tangled network of jets firing in multiple directions. The object did not appear to be coming apart in a catastrophic breakup, nor did it show the continuously brightening tail that heavy sublimation would produce. Instead, it resembled something unfolding or activating in stages. Then came the radio data. On October 29th, the MERCAT radio telescope detected absorption signatures from hydroxyl radicals, molecules that are formed when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart water vapor. This was the first conclusive chemical indication that 3i Atlas does, in fact, contain water-bearing compounds, not theorized, not assumed, observed. In principle, this should have resolved the issue. A body containing volatile ices that sublimate near the sun is, by definition, a comet. Case closed. But this evidence did the opposite. It reopened everything. If water vapor is present, then the heating from perihelion should have produced a visible, structured tail. The chemistry demands this outcome. Hydroxyl radicals are not formed in isolation. They are the direct consequence of active sublimation. In other words, the comet is releasing gas. Yet, once again, the images do not show a coherent tail. The material being released is either too heavy to reflect light effectively, too clumped to spread into a plume, or distributed in a way that does not allow the tail to form along the direction expected from radiation pressure. This is not how comets behave. The chemistry says a tail should exist. The physics says a tail should exist. The object remains stubbornly, visibly tailless. That gap between what should appear and what is observed is where the mystery lives. When the long-awaited Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter images were finally released, the situation did not become clearer. The high-rise instrument is among the most powerful imaging systems ever deployed beyond Earth. If any camera could reveal structure, texture, or fragmentation, it would be this one. Yet the images that emerged were blurred, soft, and ambiguous, not blank, but unresolved. They did not show a clean, compact nucleus like the ones we have seen from comets such as 67P or Temple 1. Instead, 3i Atlas appeared extended, 
as though it were larger than expected, surrounded by debris, or possibly composed of multiple unresolved components. There are natural explanations for this. A nucleus surrounded by a dense coma can appear fuzzy. A comet that has recently undergone mass shedding can present a cloud-like morphology. A nucleus rotating chaotically could distort the observed shape during long exposure imaging. All of these are reasonable interpretations, but none of them match neatly with the radio results, the jet behavior, the anti-tail geometry, and the missing primary tail. What the images confirm is not an answer, but a trajectory of contradiction. 3 i Atlas contains the ingredients of a comet, but does not behave like a comet. It releases volatiles, but does not form the structures associated with that release. It displays jets, but not the mass loss signature needed to sustain them. It presents structure, but not the clarity required to identify the mechanism behind it. The object is not performing in ways that align with the models we use to classify interstellar bodies, and that is the core issue. Not aliens, not craft, not intent, nonconformity. 3i Atlas is defying categorization. Our scientific frameworks assume that comets form in predictable chemical and thermal environments, but 3i Atlas did not form here. It may not have formed in any environment remotely similar to the systems we understand. It could be a relic of astrophysical conditions that no longer exist. It could have been shaped by radiation fields, collisions, or stellar winds, unlike those present in our region of the galaxy today. In that sense, the mystery is not just about what the object is, but when and where it came from. The blurred high-rise images did not solve the debate. They confirmed that the debate is real. The blurred high-rise images, combined with the meerkat radio detections, leave us with a situation where several key signatures of cometary activity are present, yet one of the most recognizable features remains absent. There is still no clear cometary tail, not before perihelion, not after, even now. Current measurements confirm that 3i Atlas is producing water-related vapor, as demonstrated by the detection of hydroxyl radicals formed under solar ultraviolet radiation. Under normal circumstances, this process leads to the development of a visible tail, shaped by solar radiation pressure and the solar wind. However, the material released from the object appears unevenly distributed, forming discrete jets rather than a continuous plume, preventing the expected tail structure from forming. This is not typical behavior for known comets, and it remains an unresolved observational discrepancy. This brings the discussion back to Michio Kaku's central point regarding communication rather than danger. The issue is not that 3i Atlas poses a threat to Earth, but that gaps in data release and incomplete explanations allow uncertainty to persist. The delay in publishing the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter imagery created a window where observation progressed without corresponding clarification. In such cases, the absence of explanatory context becomes a factor in how the situation is interpreted, even when the underlying data does not support extraordinary conclusions. Kaku emphasized that scientific transparency is necessary to avoid misinterpretation when studying rare phenomena. In practical terms, the lack of a visible tail despite confirmed volatile release, suggests that the nucleus of 3i Atlas differs significantly from the comets commonly observed in the inner solar system. Possible explanations include a surface coated in dense, non-reflective material, uneven heating due to a fractured or layered interior, or the presence of dust grains that do not scatter sunlight efficiently. Another possibility is that the material is being released in localized jets that do not combine into a coherent tail. All of these explanations fall within natural cometary behavior, but they do not yet align neatly with one another. This is why the object is still being studied. At this stage, the situation illustrates the complexity of analyzing interstellar visitors with limited observational windows and evolving datasets. The collected evidence is substantial, but it has not yet converged into a definitive model. Additional imaging, spectroscopic surveys, and orbital modeling will be required to determine whether 3i Atlas represents an extreme case of natural cometary variation or a structure shaped under conditions not typically encountered in our solar system. 3i Atlas continues forward on its course. More observations are coming. Eventually, the object will move too far from the sun to study in detail, and the meaning of this moment will depend on what is learned before it fades into the background of deep space once again. 
Maybe it will settle into the history books as an ancient relic of star-forming epochs long before ours. Maybe it will remain an anomaly that resists neat classification. Or perhaps, if it behaves in a way that defies every remaining natural explanation, it will force a reconsideration of one question we rarely allow ourselves to ask without hesitation. What if we are not the only ones building things in the dark? The mystery remains open, and the world is watching.